Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I've never been more excited for a video in my entire life. What about vlog number one? Nope, this is it. Anyways, I have been dreaming my entire life of going to South Africa. My mom grew up there for part of her life when she was a kid. She's been back without me and didn't bring me when I was in high school. And I have been basically peer pressuring my parents into going on safari for a long time. It was epic. And you, if it's not at the very top of your bucket list, it should be. So we flew in via Emirates to South Africa. We flew Emirates because this guy over here. You, I wanted to fly Emirates. You wanted so the bar. He yeah. wanted to go to the bar in the back of the plane, yeah. which was epic. It was cool. Um, but we flew into Cape Town a week before me, Thomas, my mom and my dad flew in a week before my sister and one of her friends came in and did all of Cape Town. Cape Point, Table wine Mountain. country, Table Mountain, uh, Camps Bay. You'll get the full scoop. We'll chime in here and there, but South Africa, here we come. <laughs> So this next portion of the video was still while we were in Cape Town, but let's just say I was nervous as hell. So, I have to lay the land. Yeah. I'm scared of pools. Not really. Like, I know the sharks can't come through the gutters, but they could. And I won't go in the ocean. Once we, I took Thomas on this first trip and he pushed me in the water when we were in Jamaica and I didn't speak to him for 24 hours because I thought I was going to die. I'm, I'm a little scared of being eaten by a shark. Which is Weird that we went to shark diving. So yeah, we went shark diving. They pick you up at three in the morning, early. Yeah, it was And we really were already early. jet lagged. You have to sit on a bus for a couple hours to get to where they put you in the water and then you boat out an hour to go diving with the sharks. And this guy over here was not feeling it. I was just nice and quiet. I was like, what am I doing? And I'm not afraid of the ocean. I go in the ocean all the time and I'm not really afraid. Like you're not everybody's, really afraid. Af everybody's afraid of sharks, but. Yeah, but you're not really, you're not afraid of flying. You're not afraid yeah. of sharks. You're, you're like. You know, what, you know what I was afraid of? Is I kept having visions of like being attached to the side of the boat in a steel cage and it coming untouched and sinking down. Anyhow, we get out there to the water. We put on all our gear, wetsuit. It's crazy cold, by the way. Like we're super, super Bridget. close to Bridget. Antarctica. Antarctica. Yeah. And water is freezing. Well, I'll just show you guys what happens next. I understand how they felt in the Titanic. <laughs> how you doing? Cold. Yeah. <laughs>
as super super cold. I, I don't know how Rose survived the Titanic. Two, the sharks could care less about us. Nope. Like, they all they wanted were the fish heads and the bait. I wanted that moment where the shark like comes up to the cage and just like looks at you in the eye. Which is a great segue into the third point. I didn't get it. The visibility in South Africa was poor. Poor at best. Yeah. And that's why you could see underwater, like it wasn't super clear. And the reason for that is because this shark diving was done in a bay. So we were only like 30 minutes off the off the coast or off the shore. So what you're telling me Sand is next time we're gonna go shark diving off the coast of Mexico, like eight hours. Eight hours off the coast, like, like 40 feet visibility. Where like Paul that's, Walker went. That's where you want to do your shark shark diving. With that being said though, don't let the poor visibility like make you not do it because it some of the epic. coolest like visions was being like eye level with the water and seeing a shark swim and they, right they by. Came, so it never came up to my face which is what i wanted but it did come right by the cage right here like you could have reached out and touched it with your hand obviously you're not allowed to do that it was i mean they're magical we finally make it after 30 years of my life onto safari and i've got to be honest with you it was the most magical week of my entire life.
not be rewatching it. It makes me want to go back. Londa Lozzi is a small safari. I mean, they don't have like a huge operation. So They're a private can... game reserve, so only a specific amount of people can come onto the property at one time. Right. If you're on a game drive, you see almost nobody. And at, since it is a private game reserve, these animals grow up with the cars around them, so that and no one has ever harmed them from the cars. And so you saw like the lion and the leopard walk right by Thomas's leg, like he could have touched it. Um, they're not scared of you, and the car isn't. Um, they don't associate the, the vehicle with fear or food. Right. So they're you're not. You're just a big moving rock. You're just another like you're just a yeah. You're basically that's perfect. Yeah. The way safari works is the animals are most active during dusk and dawn. That's when they feed. Yes, it's also the coolest time of day. Right. So you wake up super early, you get your coffee, you go out on a game it's drive. It's about the knock on the door. You go out on a game drive, you stop halfway through the game drive and have a sunriser, which is like coffee in the bush, tea, little biscuits, cookies. cookies. Then you come back to your camp. By which, like 8.30. When I say camp, it's not like camping it's like the nicest hotel yeah. i've ever stayed at <laughs> and then you have your breakfast and then you've got the whole middle of the day to take a nap to get a massage go to yoga. go swim yoga lift weights whatever then you come back for lunch yep after lunch you go out on your after your evening game drive yeah as the sun is setting they stop and do what's called a sundowner so everyone gets out of their car out of the car and they pour in cocktails the in the bush and in they the pour bush. cocktails and you watch the sun go down so you're on safari for like two and a half hours in the morning and two and a half hours in the evening. You have five hours of animal viewing. You're sitting down the whole time and it flies by. Like it doesn't feel, get get boring. At no, all. not at all. I like it was the most special day. <laughs> those people on ski slopes who go back and forth really slow and they look like it's like a statue skiing because they're afraid or like have you ever seen those bird scooters and like everybody's cruising by one person because they're going like four miles an hour and like they're just very cautious that's Gavi and this next clip is the best example of cautious Gavi There are railings on both sides. I didn't even pick my feet up. I just... We saw that. We saw that. I had to fast forward the video. Like, the video was like 10 minutes long. That clip was 10 minutes long. Did you see Gabi laughing yeah. at me? <laughs> Gabi. I survived.
How was that? So the biggest difference between Shobi and Londa Lozgi, as you can see, is Shobi's on the water. Shobi is on the water. Um, yeah. So we saw a lot of cool perspective from the that boat. of a boat versus yeah. being in a car on land. I, we're, there's a whole blog post on what's got to be cooking with all the details on Africa. If you are in this part of Africa, that if you want to go look in, into planning a trip for yourself, it is without a doubt the most magical trip we've ever done in our lives. Yeah. Okay, that's it for our South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Victoria Falls. Victoria Falls. All right, make sure to subscribe. Yep, like and subscribe like below. And subscribe. Bye.